Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and in today's video I have a challenge for you. I believe that we are all within the personality psychology community at risk of primarily using personality psychology to understand the past. We tend to look at past decisions, past relationships, past experiences and often this just becomes a sense of self-reinforcement exercise. And uh, it becomes about like rationalizing the decisions you made and the actions you took and the things that happened to you. It comes from the topic of uh, either like this positive urge to say, yeah, I did everything I did because of who I am, or it becomes a negative because of who I am. And uh, what I want you to do is I want you to use personality psychology to understand something far more important and that is your future. Based on what you know about yourself, what potential do you have? What opportunities do you see yourself exploring in the future? What relationships do you see yourself seeking out? What kind of people do you think you will have an urge to connect with? What kind of mentor figures do you think you will attract into your life? What kind of sidekicks will you find yourself surrounded by? What kind of people around you do you think you will attract? And I know this is a difficult question to answer. It's hard to know the future. The point is not to make an exact exercise, but it's to think about your future storyline and to think about what you know about yourself and to actually use it for something useful, which is understanding who you are becoming. We are in grave need of understanding what we are becoming, like what career we're going to get, what we are, who, who we're going to date, who our soulmate is. We're all in need of understanding these things, and we can never know for certain, of course, but we, we need to think about it. And the reason we need to think about this is because it is through thinking about it and through learning about it, you can make conscious decisions to change your future and to change your life. And that's the thing about predicting your past and going back and using personality psychology primarily to think about your past. When you do, you tend to box yourself in. And I've always been a big uh, opponent of stereotypes. And I find the most limiting beliefs we have about ourselves are usually the beliefs we have about who we used to be. The interesting thing that I've noticed is when our future changes so does our view of our past. When we get a new idea of ourselves, our entire recollection of our history tends to change. We tend to bring up experiences that were relevant for us becoming that kind of person. So as a politician, I might have described myself differently than as who I am today. I might have ignored a lot of experiences in my life that were important to me in shaping who I am, but that didn't have any importance in becoming who I was five years ago uh, or that had a minor importance or that went against why I am the way person I am today and there are experiences in our life that contradict who we are today there are things we did in our past that contradict who we are today we made choices we explored interests we went into hobbies we went into relationships that completely go against what the kind of a person we are right now so the challenge I'm issuing to you, and to myself really, is to begin to use personality psychology to predict people's future. I'm not talking here in a narrow or constrictive sense. I'm not saying about you are going to meet that kind of a person and you're going to experience that. You can never know that, but you can know what's in your imminent potential range. You can know what kind of relationship you think you are going to find. You can get an idea of what kind of career you think you're going to pursue. And you can think about this in contrast to your present. In your present, you might not be doing anything to chase these careers. In your presence, you might not do anything to find that kind of a person. In the presence, you might be sitting at home watching television, reading books, or, I don't know, just contemplating life and currently... You might be in stasis. But 
when you start writing these things down, you also kind of start realizing what things need to change in your life to attract that kind of future. What kind of decisions you need to start making differently, what things you might need to start doing differently if you are to explore these opportunities. If you know that in the future you're going to have a new hobby, and if you know, if you have a clue what this hobby might be, what decision this might be, that also kind of gets in the way of overthinking. Because it's so easy to kind of start overthinking and start saying, yeah, I want to do this, I want to go into this area or into this career, and then to think about going in there and to think and think and think and think about uh, if you're going to go there or not. But then when you start writing it down on paper, you kind of realize that it's obvious you are going to go in there. You are going to do it. Or you start realizing, no, I'm not going to go in there at all. I'm actually just distracting myself with this. You start realizing the things, the ideas you have about your future that are unrealistic and the things that are realistic. And it's really about creating your own narrative and your own story. Uh, it's a really efficient exercise in therapy to have your patients write their stories and then to rewrite their endings, to write how they got there, to rewrite their past to kind of get people to think about their ideal future. And the question here is, what's your ideal future? Okay, who you are right now, that doesn't really matter. You might not be who you want to be right now. You might not be happy with your life you're in. You might not feel comfortable with the hobbies you have. You might feel bored. You might feel understimulated. You might feel a lack of motivation. You might feel a sense of uh, unease or anxiety. Or you might feel a sense of stress and overwhelm at what you are currently trying to do. And then, especially if you're stressed and tense, it's so important to take time to write your story, to write your script so that there won't be any stress in the future, so that there won't be <laughs> overwhelming situations, so that there won't be any things that cause turmoil in your life. Otherwise, you're going to keep on doing it and keep on doing it, and then there's going to be more and more and more and more and more and more and more. And more and <laughs> you're never going to find that chance to breathe. I find myself wondering if it's possible to, if you get to know a person, say I meet someone on the street, say I look at them, observe them for a bit, and then I go up and talk to them, if it's possible to have any clue about what's happening inside that mind of theirs? Is it possible to have a clue about what decisions that person is currently experiencing, what situation that person is currently in, and what they are headed towards? And then I think about what tools I could use to understand this, and one of the best tools I know is the hero's journey. The hero's journey maps out what decisions a person might make if they would desire to be heroes what actions they might take, what things they might start up. And that's the thing, like, if you decide to be a hero, to have flow, to, have, uh, to live an idealized life, you're going to make a lot of decisions differently. But if you are rather inclined to, for example, be a sidekick, then you're going to walk the sidekick's journey, and then you're going to experience experiences related to being a sidekick. And if you're going to be a mentor, you're going to experience that kind of life. So... Uh, also, it's about kind of what life you want to live and uh, about what kind of story you want to experience. And if you are more inclined to being a sidekick or towards being a mentor figure or towards being an adventurer, your journey might be slightly different from the hero. <laughs> when uh, the hero might have made certain choices, the adventurer would say, screw ethics, screw what's right and wrong, I just want experience. And when the mentor goes in, they might say, um, Ethics are super important and guidance and doing the right thing and being conscientious and thinking things through. And when the sidekick does something, it might be more about what's fun and what's interesting and what's you want, what, what, what you want to learn at the moment. So it's also currently about your present needs. If you know kind of what stage you are in right now and what path you're walking, that means you can also get a clue about your future. You can get a clue that, yes, I'm going to experience this. Yes, I'm going to be suffering with this. These obstacles are going to come up. These relationships problems are going to come up. These issues are going to happen. And what I can do as I know this is 
I can think about how I will get through them. And I can also get a sense of assuredness when I make a call to start up a journey, when I make a call to be a hero or to do something, I can also think about where I'm headed. And I can kind of resign myself or accept that I am made this decision to go on this journey and even though I first only signed up for the good, I also knew it would lead to bad things as well. And I accept that. I accept that this will happen. And I'm ready to face it. And I know I will get through it. And I know I will complete my journey. So that's all for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.